Brother Lifat was a dedicated community leader who established and ran many organizations in the service of the community. He was one of the founders and president of United Muslims of America, which was founded in 1982. He was one of the founders of Islamic Society of East Bay, which was founded in mid-1980s. He was the founder of American Institute of International Studies and of Journal of America. He was the author of the book, American Revolution as Affected by the Muslim World. In year 2002, he ran for the U.S. Congress on Republican Party nomination against a longtime Democrat Congressman Pete Stark in predominantly Democrat constituency. He could not win as expected, but he established friendly relationship with his opponent, Congressman Pete Stark, and had many meetings and discussions with him on various subjects. I knew him since early 1970s when I had arrived in this country. One thing that I had noticed in him was that unique was his understanding of Muslims and Islam as an integral part of America, not as foreigners, as many first-generation immigrants tend to think. He tried to prove his point by the historical facts. He noted in his book, American Revolution as Affected by the Muslim World. I think all of us should buy this book read it and share it with our American friends. It is avail available on Amazon.com as well as few copies are he here on this table. Uh, Iftekhar High is selling it for $25. Now I will invite our first speaker today. Um, we have many speakers today. Many people have expressed their desire to share their memories uh, of uh, Brother Sayyid Mahmoud. But first speaker I'm inviting is his daughter, Zara. Assalamu alaikum. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Zara, and I am Sayyid Rafid Mahmoud's daughter. Before I begin, I would like to thank all of you here on behalf of my family for coming this afternoon. As I stand here, I see so many friends and relatives that have come to be here for my father. I'm honored to be here to speak with you about him. My father was the eldest of 11 children. He was born on May 3rd, 1944 in a local hospital in Allahabad, India. After the independence of India and Pakistan in 1947, my grandparents moved to East Pakistan where my grandfather worked for the railway. In 1951, they moved again to Karachi where they lived for many years. My father immigrated to the United States in April 1969. He was the first person in his family to travel to this country. He attended college in Berkeley and earned his undergraduate degree in business and marketing. While my father attended college, he also worked full time and lived in San Francisco. He was always very friendly and enjoyed helping people. During this time, my father helped many other young Pakistani students settle into life here and establish themselves in America. My parents were married in 1973, and in the late 70s, they moved to the Bay Area. My father was always very active in the Pakistani and Islamic community. He was a founding member of the Islamic Society of the East Bay. It was his dream to have a complete Islamic center that everybody in the area could go to. Under his leadership, Al-Masjid Al-Jamia was the land for the Al-Masjid Al-Jamia was purchased and the first two phases of the Masjid were constructed. 
I have many memories of my parents working at the Islamic Society offices in Fremont to help make this dream a reality. As the president of Ummah, my father truly believed in the mission of the organization. He often spoke about the importance of educating and encouraging young Muslims to actively participate in the civic and political activities in America. My father was also the founder and president of the American Institute of International Studies. He was always active in politics and was a Republican nominee for the California State Assembly in 2000. Two years later, in 2002, he was nominated by the Republican Party for U.S. Congress. He always believed that we should express our opinions and be active community members. My father also loved poetry and writing. He enjoyed writing poems in Urdu and reading poems by Rumi to me. His book, The American Revolution as Affected by the Muslim World, was published late last year. He begins the book by thanking his parents for teaching him to be just and courageous. I think he passed this lesson on to all of the children in our family. My father showed us his strong character throughout his life. Even though he was very sick the last few months of his life, he would greet all of us with a smile. He did his best to stay strong and keep his calm, cool demeanor. He felt it was important to show kindness and compassion to everybody in our lives. May Allah bless him and give him a place in Jannah. Thank you. Thank you, Zara. Our next speaker, I would invite Dr. Wahid Siddiqui. We have uh, many speakers here today and we are trying to keep uh, as short as possible so that everybody has a chance to speak. Assalamu alaikum. <clears throat> Rifat's personality can best be expressed by the following Urdu couplets which I used to recite whenever I introduced him to an audience. The first Urdu couplet मैं अकेला ही चला था जानी बे मंजिल मगर लोग साथ आते गए और कारवां बनता गया Translation I started walking towards my destination alone People started joining me gradually and we all transformed into a caravan The other couplet which I always recited was زمانہ اہلِ خیرت سے تو ہو چکا مایوس زمانہ اہلِ خیرت سے تو ہو چکا مایوس عجب نہیں کوئی دیوانہ کام کر جائے The community got disappointed by the so-called men of rationality and wisdom It will perhaps be no wonder if someone reckless could do the job That was the kind of a person Rifat was He will take big risks without considering what will happen. One more quality of Rifat which I would like to share with you is the way he used to recite the Quranic surahs when he led the prayers. It was not the Qirat per se, but the sweetness and the dedication he showed when he recited the surahs. You felt that he is reciting the surah from the bottom of his heart. Bottom of his heart. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him the highest place in Jannah. Ameen. Uh, with your permission, I will read the letter of Congressman Honda. Congressman Honda knew Rifat very well. When he heard of his passing away, he immediately wrote a letter to his family, which I will read it to you. To the Mahmood family. Please allow me to express my deepest sympathies to your family. I was greatly saddened to hear about the passing away of Sayyid Rifat Mahmood. Sayyid's effort to educate and foster Muslim-American participation 
in mainstream social, economic, political, and civic activities have benefited our community throughout his life. Though this time is difficult for you and your family, I know that Sayyid will forever be remembered by his loved ones, his colleagues, and your, our community. You and your family are in my thoughts. With warm regards, Michael M. Honda, member of Congress. This letter is dated August 6, two days after Rifat passed away. Thank you. Thank you, Wahid Bhai. Uh, I would now invite uh, Sister Reshma Inamda. Assalamu alaikum. I'm Reshma Inamda and a local community member. I first met Rifat Bhai back in the mid-1980s when he was president of Islamic Society of East Bay, back when the masjid was basically just raw land and I was just barely out of college. I used to volunteer on an informal basis for the masjid, and uh, Rifat Bhai would always encourage me and uh, you know, try to motivate me to do more. He seemed to have a lot more faith in my abilities than I did. Similarly, he had great faith and a strong vision for the American Muslim community. His book, The American Revolution is Affected by the Muslim World, reflected this faith as he chronicled the influence and presence of Muslims right from the roots of the founding of these United States. He envisioned us as no less than full participants in the civic political life of this nation. To me, his life embodies one of uh, the poet Ralph Waldo Emerson's quotes. Do not go where the path may lead. Go instead where there is no path and leave a trail. Sayyid Rifat Mahmoud lived his life as a trailblazer based on this vision and philosophy of full participation. A more recent memory of Rifat Bhai was when I got locked out of my car a few years ago at work. I think I was standing kind of like this. Oh no. And I was a bit frantic because I needed to go check on dad who was ill. Um, my dad said in Amdar and he was in poor health and he was, you know, the caregiver was calling me and I'd locked my car, I you know, couldn't get in. Anyway, uh, dad and Rifat Bhai had worked on various community projects together. Uh, and Rifat Bhai happened to be near my office and had serendipitously dropped in to discuss some of the many um, projects and ideas he'd had, not just about civil, civic and political life, but also environmental energy saving measures. He very kind-heartedly gave me a ride home so I could get my second key. Meanwhile, since I lived next door to my dad, we both dropped in to see him, and my dad, due to multiple illnesses, you know, strokes, and um, eyesight issues, didn't always recognize people. But, when the minute he heard Rifat Mahmoud's voice, he said immediately, he exclaimed, my friend. And so it was no brainer and an honor to have been able to do our small part and support his project to gift his insightful book to various Congress people so that they too would be educated about the history of Muslims in America. I for one was not aware that he was as ill as he was and quite shocked to hear of his passing on to the next realm because whenever I met him, he exuded life. He was always filled with hope and ideas um, on a wide range of topics, such as the Million Muslim Vote Bank, um, or the hope that the Islamic Society of East Bay's governing board would be more open and transparent. When I learned he had, be once again, become president of ISEB, I thought, Alhamdulillah, after a protracted battle for control by two factions, finally, maybe the masjid would get it back on track. I was truly sad to learn that certain community members apparently launched lawsuits rather than cooperate to elevate ICB and the community at large. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provide hidayah to such people and grant maghfira and a place in the highest jannah for Sayyid Rufat Mahmood. Ameen. Sayyid Rufat Mahmood was a thinker, activist, visionary, trailblazer, but most important to me, my father called him friend and he was my community elder in Islam. He is missed. May his legacy and good works continue to inspire. Ameen.
Thank you, Sister Reshma. In my observation, Brother Rippert looked at the democracy in the United States as a vibrant democracy in which any group of people could play a vital role by building alliances with the like-minded people of other faiths and races and cultures. He strongly believed that the people who invest their resources in political arena tend to get what they want, and those who sit back and complain do not get anything. Now I would invite uh, Brother Javed Ilahi. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, Sister Reshma, it was good to hear from you and you know, we remember your father fondly. He was also a great leader. He really helped the community. Brother Rifat, when I think about it, I, I, I remember Munir Niazi's uh, ghazal, Hamesha Anteer Kar Deta Hoon Main. Zaruri baat kehni ho, koi vada nibana ho, usse awaz deni ho, usse wapis bulana ho, Hamesha Anteer Kar Deta Hoon Main. I mean, Rifat was a leader, he was so far ahead of us, he wanted to do so many things. We tried to help him, but not enough. I mean, he had some great goals, and if he, had, and he inspired us, he built a great grand mosque, and, and there were other people helping out, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, obviously, his blessings were there, but that is a monument to Rifat Mahmood. And what is amazing, I mean, we think that when you do good deeds, you get your reward in heaven. You get it here. I mean, when we were at his funeral prayers and there was hundreds of people attending those prayers, you could see this is a person who built this mosque and his funeral prayers, his last washing are held at the same mosque. So he got his reward for building the mosque that, you know, well, in a sense, he was not alive at that time, but he had his reward because he had accomplished that. I mean, that mosque is expanded into schools. It has got a full uh, center for washing. And then you also have the burial grounds. Uh, his family history has been decided. His daughter Zahra eloquently stated where he had come from. And he was an immigrant who came to the United States in 1969 and in a short time became part of the community. He ran for assembly district, he ran for Congress, and he probably got more votes as a Republican in a Democratic district than any other Republican before him. I wish we could have accomplished him. He wrote his book, which we have talked about, the American Institute, and he was a, a thing, he set up a think tank, the American Institute of International Studies, which, whose website is filled with articles that are worth reading. Uh, the book that he wrote is not just a book about American Muslims and the history of America. It is really a path. I mean, we have the terrorism phenomena that's going around, and the answer to the West is get rid of those burkinis, and there will be no longer terrorism. And Rifat said uh, that you really have to look at the causes of terrorism. The Zionist, the Zionist lobby, with its strong allies in the US, redefined the Palestinian armed resistance as acts of terrorism. The Israeli bombing in Gaza and the West Bank are referred to as defensive acts against Palestinian terrorism. And he said, unless the US and world leaders have the courage to honestly investigate the real cause of violence and so-called terrorism, there will be no end to terrorism across the globe. That's a message that we have to you know, uh, get around and tell everybody else. And again, to those of us who no, could not timely support Rifat, I'll, I'll end with the last verses of Munir Niazi's Ghazal. Badalte mosmo ki sair mein Dil ko lagana ho, kisi ko yaad rakhna ho, kisi ko bhool jana ho, hamesha deer kar deta ho main. Kisi ko maut se pehle, kisi gham se bachana, haqiqat aur thi kuch, usko ja ke ye batana ho, hamesha deer kar deta ho main. Let's pray for effort and let's try to follow his legacy by action. Let's do things that he started to do and carry his message across. Thank you very much. Thank you, Brother Javed. Uh, now I would like to invite Sister Samina Sandas. <laughs> a 
السلام علیکم بچ آئی ویس اپ سیڈ از سو ٹرو وی آلویز ڈیلے ایوری تھنگ وی شوڈ ہیو ٹول پیپل وین دے ور آ لائف دیٹس اے بیوٹیفل تھنگ آئی لرن فرام مائی گرینڈ مدر وین نیبر ہوڈ پیپل ووڈ کم اینڈ سی سم تھنگ اباؤٹ سم بڈی ہو جسٹ پاس اوے شی ووڈ لسن شی ووڈ آس دم لیٹر ڈیڈ یو ٹیل دم وین دے ور آ لائف And obviously, the answer is no. We always do that. Life is so unpredictable. People used to say, live as this is your last day. I have learned in this year, live as this is your last moment, because there is only one moment between life and death. We just heard a horrible news yesterday. My son lost one of his very dear friends. Young man, Amir Khan, probably many of you know. A few months back, my son lost another friend. So there is not a day in between life and death. There is a moment. So if there is somebody you need to say sorry, If there is somebody you need to say that I admire you, support you, inspire you, care for you, please don't delay it. As for Rifat Mahmood, I would always remember one afternoon interaction as long as I live. That was right after I founded American Muslim Voice. Since we were working in the mainstream, I wasn't coming to Chandni as usual. every other weekend. So he saw me one day and said, where have you been? I said, I've been working. You probably know I have founded American Muslim Voice. He said, yes. And he said, I know you're doing great work. I said, I don't tell anybody. How do you know? He laughed and he said, Samina Sahiba, jab chand chamakta hai, to uski roshni chupai nahi jati. That was the most wonderful inspiration I needed at that time. Because as we all know, when somebody new starts something, our community is not jumping with joy. They all say, oh no, one more organization, even though we need the organization. Please, in his loving memory, and in Amir's loving memory, in Eric's loving memory, or anybody else you know, Take care of things today, this hour, this moment. Don't wait for another day. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Samina. Now I would like to invite uh, Brother Mats Dahling. Assalamu alaikum. Sometimes you call me Mertz, sometimes you call me Mertzi. So that's a difference. Mertz is kind of a German name. Mertzi is my name. It comes from Finland. <clears throat> Rafet was different things to me at different times. Sometimes he was my son. Sometimes he was my brother. Sometimes he's my friend. It's depending on what occasion it was that I had getting together with him. Sometimes I'd miss out on seeing him and he'd tell me when he calls me, he says, you can run, but you cannot hide. I'll find you. I first came to know Rifat when I was president of the San Francisco Islamic Center on Crescent Avenue back around 1977. I don't know what year it was, somewhere around that time. He was a working member of my board of directors. A little later on, I was the editor of the Islamic Center's newsletter, and Rifat was already writing articles for the newsletter and to other organizations for Islamic causes. And he thought I should also edit his articles. He spoke English, but his writing was Urdu English. I guess he was aware of the Urdu English flavor in his writing at that time. 
Now that was pushing 40 years ago. He always had good content in his writing. They were always meaningful and informative. It is hard to improve on any of his writings. He always put a lot of thought in it. Griffith was always meeting people from all walks of life. He reached out across the religious aisles and he knew what was going on in the minds of those not affiliated with Islam. Consider the location of the Fremont Mosque, Islamic Society of East Bay. They are now neighbors with a Methodist church and they share the same parking lot. Harvard University selected the Islamic Society of East Bay and the Methodist Church as a model of the coexistence of two faiths together. Yes, he had a hand in that. I worked with him when he inaugurated the American Institute of International Studies way back in 1995. This brought in writers from around the world because the next logical step was to publish these articles in the Journal of America. I continued to work with him as one of his editors and it published and is published online. Readers include people in Russia and the United States government agencies. In 2002, he managed to be the Republican nominee for the 13th District, United States Congress. I introduced Rifat to the local community at a gathering here at Chandni Restaurant. As we know, the Republican Party was starting to slide, or whatever the cause, he didn't get the office. But he was a contender. His opponent, Pete Stark, has since consulted with him on many occasions and gave him encouragement to continue in his writing. Rifat, being in such close contact with such a variety of people, knew they were not even understanding how America had grown to such a prominent country. What did we have that other independent countries do not have? Due to Rifat's constant researching and reading, he realized what the Muslim world had contributed to our growth and status, and he had to put this down on paper. One page developed into another, and he wanted to make sure that it made sense, and he wanted to make sure that the I's were dotted and the T's crossed. So I came into the picture again. His writing soon developed into chapters, one after another, and his work was growing into a book. By this time, it had developed its name. This was the start of writing about the American Revolution as affected by the Muslim world. He would send me portion by portion, which developed into chapter by chapter. I read everything, and I returned it piece by piece with my comments and changes and different words from time to time. I still have portions remaining in my computer so I can reminisce from time to time as I learned very much about our country that I didn't know before. I didn't get to see the book in its completed form until after it was published. And that was a happy moment for me as I realized that he completed what he started and now his writing is available to everybody. Probably most easily on, available online through Amazon Book Service or wherever. It was as if he knew this was to be his final legacy and he worked tirelessly to finalize the book and make sure it got published. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Marks.